Hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to look at transformations of graphs. So these six transformations here, basically, you have to know them. You have to know how they work um, and what they are. So a translation is well. Again, hopefully, you do know what these are. A transform. A translation is well. A vertical translation moves the graph not that way, either up or down, and a horizontal translation moves it either right or left. A vertical stretch stretches it um, vertically. Um, so think about a, an elastic band, we just stretch, stretch it out ver this way again vertically or horizontally this way. And the negatives reflect it in the x-axis and the y-axis. Now look, be very careful, negative f, f of x reflects in the x-axis and f of negative x reflects in the y-axis. Also be careful, the, the, vert, the vertical ones act as you would expect. So when you add a, it just moves it up a. When you subtract a, it moves it down a. But the horizontal, if you add a inside the bracket, it'll actually move it left a. And if you subtract a, it'll move it right a. And similarly here, when you stretch it vertically by a, it'll, it'll stretch with scale factor a, fine. And if you stretch it horizontally, it will stretch it with scale factor one over a. So it like if if a was two, say, it'll actually squish it, which is definitely not a technical word, but we say well, the the correct word is actually you could say compress, but really the, the most technical word is to is a stretch of scale factor a half. Okay. Now a lot of that won't make much sense without actually seeing what's going on. So I would strongly advise you to go into Desmos and start playing around with all these different all these different transformations. What I have done is I have created this graph f of x. I, I just like the look of it because it's got asymptotes and did a lot of different features, maximum, minima, things like that. So that this is f of x. It doesn't really, you, you haven't studied, the, this is a rational function of a particular type. You don't have to study this. Don't worry too much about it. Um, but note what I'm about to do here will work with any graph. So f if I do f of x, and let's just say plus 2, that translates it vertically by 2. It moves the graph up 2. If I do minus 2, it'll move it down 2. If I do, I'll stick with 2 because it's an easy number. If I do 2 f of x, it vertically stretches it by 2. So this goes from 5 to 10. This goes from 1 to 2. This um, horizontal asymptote, which is actually a 2, goes up to 4. If I though do f of 2x, see what I mean by that? It, it squishes it. This, um, this minimum which is at negative 2 now goes to negative 1. The, the y-intercept stays the same because it was actually at 0. So what's it, what it does is it halves all the x-coordinates. If you actually wanted to stretch it, you'd have to do x uh, f of a half x or f of x over 2 and that kind of stretches it out um, by 2 so this this minimum is now at negative 4 instead of negative 2 and then finally the the reflections if I do negative f of x that reflects it in the x-axis and if I do f of negative x that reflects it in the y-axis okay um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to because it's fine asking Desmos to do it because uh, they're pretty good at, at drawing graphs let's admit um, but when we actually have to sketch it ourselves how do we do it so I'm going to do one of these this this graph for all the the six different types and explain my thinking as I go along what it wants you to do now it, it gives you a and b so a is just this kind of point where the, where the straight line meets probably like a straight line parabola kind of thing. Uh, B is the maximum and these are the intercepts. So it says mark the new points A and B and the X and the axes intercepts if possible. So it won't always be possible to know what the intercepts are. Okay. Let's let's do this. So I need to f of x plus 2. I need to translate this graph up to. So every point needs to go up to the minus 1 1 goes to minus 1, 3. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, 3. So A is now negative 1, 3. The 2 goes up to 4. 
So the negative 2 goes up, or the 0, 2 goes up to 4. So that's 4. The b goes up to 5. So it's 2, 5. b is a 2, 5, and that's the maximum. Now this 4, this 4, 0 goes to 4, 2. But that's not actually a, a point that I care about. But I, I actually don't know what the new x intercept is going to be because it's basically going to be whatever whatever is down here so I don't I don't know it and that's why it actually says here if possible so I don't it's not possible in this case so let's try and draw the graph I need the straight line over to that and then it goes up to here and then down right forgive my not perfect graphs as I do these I'm gonna to have to try and do that one again okay something like that fine f of x plus 2. So if, if it was f of x minus 2, I just move all the points down to. f of x plus 2 in a bracket, now this is a horizontal translation to the left, I'm going to move it left 2. Okay, so this moves it up 2, but this one moves it left 2. It's a bit, um, well, it is annoying, but it's different to what you'd expect. So the negative 1, the a negative 1, 1 becomes negative 3, 1, because I'm going left. So a is now negative 3, 1. This 2 is actually moved to the left, so I'm, I don't actually care about this point because it's not no longer a, an intercept. The 2, 3 is actually going to become 0, 3 because, look, that's moving left 2, so that will become my new y-intercept. So this is now 2, sorry, this is now 0, 3. So b is now 0, 3. And my x-intercept, I am going to know this because it's 4, goes left 2, so this becomes 2. Let's try and draw the graph. I'm going to go straight line, and then I go up, and then down. Okay, good enough. That's 2, remember. Okay, uh, next one. 2f of x, so now I'm going to stretch it, I'm going to stretch it vertically, so I'm going to multiply the y-coordinates by 2. So this guy goes from negative 1, 1 to negative 1, 2. So a is negative 1, 2. This 2 goes from 0, 2 to 0, 4. So this is now at 4. This 2, 3 goes to, to 6. This is b. 2, 6, because I multiply 3 by 2. And this is, remember, this is 4, 0, if you like. So if I multiply 0 by 2, what do I get? Well, I still get 0. So the, the, x, inter, the x intercept isn't going to change when I stretch it vertically. So this is going to stay at 4, like this. OK, let's try and draw the graph. I'm going to go across, straight and then up let's stop there and then no ah uh, this is really difficult for me to do there something like that fine um now it does yeah it it is it's stretched you can see the whole it, it doesn't look like this so these are these three should pretty much look the same now they don't but that's only because of me in, in the way they look. This guy doesn't look the same because it's been stretched. So a stretch won't look the same where a, tra a translation will look the same. Okay, next one. F of 2x. So this is what I mean. We're gonna, we are going to uh, horizontally stretch it, scale factor a half. So I'm actually going to write here just to remind us, scale factor is a half. So we're going to half all the x coordinates, right? Now, this guy is at negative 1, 1. So the new coordinate for a is actually going to be negative a half 1. So I have half that. The 2 is actually going to stay the same. So the 2 stays the same because what's half of this is this is um, 0, 2 if you like. And what's half of 0? Well, it's Zero. So the so that doesn't ch when I when I'm stretching it horizontally, the y intercept won't change. This two three will become one three. 
because I have two. So this is going to be one, three. Now again, it's certainly not. This is certainly not perfectly to scale. But what's important is that I put in, and that's why this question says label the new points because he wants to make sure you know how to stretch it. Um, so a is halved. This is halved, which is still zero. This is half to one, and now my four has to be halved to two. So this is going to become two. Okay, let's try and draw that. So I do my straight line here, and there we go. So as I said, the not technical word here is, is well, the really, really not technical word is squished. It's been squished horizontally, um, uh, pushed in towards that what the y-axis. Um, the the more technical word is compressed, and the really technical way of saying it is it has been stretched by scale factor one half. Okay, this is now. Okay, let's see. This is now going to be the reflection. So negative f of x is a reflection in the x-axis. So what we're going to do is we ref well look all the y coordinates become negative. So negative one one becomes negative one negative one. So this goes down here. This is my a. It is a negative one negative one. And then my zero two becomes zero negative two. So this is going to be at negative two. And my two three, two three becomes two negative three. This is b two negative three. And my four zero will stay at four zero because it becomes negative zero if you want to think of it like that. Uh, but it's, that's obviously still going to be four. So you'll see now I reflect and I like to always do, do the points first and then draw the graph. So it's going to come down like this, turn there, and then up like that. That's not a bad effort. So you can see that is clearly, a ref this has been reflected in the x-axis. Okay, last one. I now need to reflect in the y-axis. So negative 1, 1 has to turn into 1, 1. So I'm going to multiply now the x coordinates by negative 1. So I'm going to swap the x coordinates. So negative 1, 1 becomes um, 1, 1. So a is now 1, 1. The 2 is going to stay the same because it's, it is 0, 2. So multiply 0 by 2 and you get, or sorry, multiply 0 by, ne by negative 1 and you still get 0. The 2, 3 is going to become negative 2, 3. So this is going to be at negative 2, 3, something like this. B is negative 2, 3. And the 4, 0 is going to become negative 4, 0. So this will be at negative 4. So I do my straight line is going to come from this side. We're going to go up like this, max out there, and then down like that. And clearly, look, if you reflect that in the y-axis, you would get this. Okay, that's the lesson. Um, hopefully, it's clear. I'm, I'm aware that I went through that quite quickly. As always, you have the opportunity to pause the video or rewatch particular part, particular parts that you want to see. But the main thing you absolutely have to be able to do or recognize are, are these six transformations. In the next lesson, I'm going to go over composite transformations, which is where we do more than one transformation in one go, which you're going to love.